eagle's food. From the Eagle's Nest, with Gary Greenwald. This unique program combines the dynamic ministry of God's Word, the discussion of contemporary issues, and the demonstration of God's power. Now, here's Gary Greenwald. Hello, I'm Gary Greenwald, and over the past several years, the Eagle's Nest Ministries has exposed certain things like rock and roll music, Dungeons and Dragons, marijuana, and even the New Age movement, and now we feel there's another attack upon our society. If I say something like wicked witches and demon clouds and spell books and even the zone of eternal evil, what comes to mind? What do you think of? Do you think of a coven of witches or a seance? Watch now. Wicked witches, demon clouds, where do we start, Mr. Van Gogh? You start by getting that spell book before those foolish witches destroy the world. We've got some witches to splat. You coming with us, Mr. V? I'm afraid I cannot. Like we're not into witches either, sir. We'll stick with you. Yeah. If you wish, I'm going to hunt down that demon mist in the zone of eternal evil where the darkest spirits are trapped. <laughs> Like on second thought, send us a postcard. <laughs> Good luck with the mist, Mr. V. If they don't recover that book, no amount of luck will save us. Oh, powers locked within this stone, transport me now to the evil zone. You know, you've been watching a Scooby-Doo cartoon, and it's amazing to me to see what's being brought forth in a cartoon. We've seen spell books, occultic amulets, we saw a crystal ball, astral projection to the evil zone, all of this in a children's cartoon. Now, I've got a guest today. His name is Phil Phillips. He's from Texas. He has been involved in missions work in his life, and he has now felt called to study the effects of cartoons and children's toys and even TV programs upon our children today. And I'd like to introduce a young man, and uh, Phil, uh, God bless you, and it's uh, good it's to see you today. It's a pleasure being here today. Gary. Now, Phil, I'll tell you what, 14 years ago, Scooby-Doo was a lot different than what we see today and I could hardly recognize it. Can you tell me what's going on in this cartoon? Yes, there's a vast movement toward the occult within the cartoon and toy industry. Most people don't realize that 80% of all cartoons deal directly with the occult, and 40% of the toys on the market have occultic influence, and these are the most popular. And these toys are actually a mirror of the cartoons, is that correct? Right, they're released together. It's a form of marketing where the toys and the cartoons are released together to create this popularity for the toys. Now, you have a concern. I know that all of this is affecting our youth, and I wanted to know, do you feel that there are a lot of children that are being influenced by the cartoons they watch? Oh, yes. Uh, take, for instance, a cartoon like He-Man and Masters of the Universe. It can be seen as many as 31 times a week in an area with a viewing audience as much as 16 million children each time it's aired. And so we're seeing a vast effect on the whole United States and other countries around the world through these cartoons and toys. Millions of children now watching occultic cartoons and then going out and buying occultic toys. Now, could we say that there is witchcraft and occultic practices that are actually being portrayed in these cartoons? Oh, yes. The witchcraft and, and occult practices are not make-believe. They're taken from actual witchcraft, actual pagan religions, levitation, mind control, astral projection, and other forms of, of witchcraft ceremonies are portrayed within the cartoons. 
all of these things are portrayed in the cartoons? Yes, could, very much so. Well, then we could suspect that there's some kind of a spiritual force behind these things to program our children. Oh, yes. The children receive this in a, in a very different light than we do. Well, Lynn, before we talk about that, let's go into another Scooby-Doo cartoon and let's see some of the occultic and witchcraft influences that are very blatant in this cartoon. Let's go to Scooby-Doo again here. Okay. We meet again, Vincent Van Gogh. Marcella! So you're the evil mist. <laughs> but how did you wind up in the zone? Oh, I was swept here by a spectral wind after I escaped your chest of demons. Mm, from one trap to the next. <laughs> you never were terribly clever, were you, Marcella? <laughs> Oh, yes, Van Gogh. While you rot here, my sister witches will set me free at last to haunt the heavens and the... Oh, in a short while, Vincent, my loyal sisters will rescue me from this zone. I wouldn't count on those three witches if I were you, Marcella. Oh, I do appreciate your concern, but with the Book of Spells, they can't fail. Once they reach Stonehenge and make a brew, they'll chant Spell 13. Which will set you free. Precisely. And I'm afraid you can't follow me. At least not without your lovely necklace. <laughs> Get used to Mr. Van Gogh, Isaac. He'll be staying here quite a while. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We made it, sisters. Stonehenge. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Well, now, well, let's get spell 13. They're about to start their spell. I can, I can hardly believe what I'm seeing here. Now, we're looking at occultic things. We're th seeing things like the chest of demons and witches and stone hedge, uh, henge and occultic uh, spell 13. I mean, we're talking about satanic things here. Now, Phil, it's becoming obvious to me what's going on, and I wonder... How did you get started in exploring all of this? I mean, how did you get into analyzing the toy industry? Well, it was very unusual. I was in the process of going on the mission field and working my way through that and speaking in different churches. And the Lord directed me to go on a 14-day fast. And during this fast, I did something very unusual. I walked into a toy store. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I walked into the toy store, I was faced with a toy holding an occult symbol in its hand. And this got my curiosity up, so I purchased the toy, and I read the comic book that was with it, and it was occultic practices within the comic book. So I talked about it in the church I was in that night, but I didn't think much of it. I threw it in the back seat of my car. About three days later, I was driving home from these series of services, and the Lord spoke to me about what happens when a child plays with a toy, and how they project themselves with their imagination into a toy, and they give it life, character, abilities, talents, and they set the surrounding around the toy. Now, wait a minute. Now, you're saying a child actually projects himself into the toy. Can you, can you say that again? Because I think that's, that's a real key here that the uh, cartoons have this kind of effect upon the child and even the toys. Yeah, the, the toy is a lifeless hunk of plastic and it only comes to life with that projection of the imagination into a toy. Yeah. And they give it life, character, abilities, talents, and set the surroundings around the toy. So the child vicariously lives through that toy. Yes, very much so. Mm. 